RVing with the Maracas welcomes you to another edition of RV Hacks. We will change a battery, a fuse, and get propane. In between trips, we had two nights in the 30s. The next day, I tried to start up the RV and just got that dreaded click, click, click sound. After freaking out, I called Ford Roadside Assistance. They agreed that something needed to happen, so they called a huge tow truck, which came well, within two hours. The driver examined the RV, agreed it was a dead battery. He didn't really want to tow it, so he opened up the passenger side dash battery access panel, which I knew about but had never thought to try to open. It was easier than I thought. You just open, the, open up the desk, remove the eight screws and the hinges to detach it and move it out of the way. Then you remove the little rubber inserts at the front and you'll see a screw in each corner of the plastic cover. So after removing those four screws, you can lift the plastic insert out. Then you see the mostly pre-cut wood dashboard. Break the wood tabs holding it in place and lift the wood out. Under that is a thin plastic liner that you will need to cut out with scissors or a razor knife. Then you can see the battery and the oil fill cap beneath some hoses and wires. We then used my battery charger to get the battery strong enough to crank the engine. And then he was done. He also said that there was no way he could have towed my RV from where it was sitting. I'm not sure if Ford installed that crappy battery, but they more than paid for it with the tow fee. Since the battery was very weak, it was obvious I needed to replace it. So the next day I removed the old battery, which required me to detach the air vents that covered where the battery sits. That was easy. You open the axis hood and they are attached above the radiator with hose clamps. So it just takes a screwdriver to detach that end and then back inside you can move them out of the way. Then you detach both battery terminals. Then I learned that the battery is clamped down. You need to remove the screw that is on the middle of the driver's side which releases the clamp. Then I had to manhandle the battery out of the compartment. They're 40 to 50 pounds so be sure you're up for that task. I then went to the battery store and got a new battery for about $110. Installing it was easier than removing the old one. The new one at least had a handle. With the battery back in, you have to figure out a way to replace the wood cover. I just used a small hinge and some brackets I had at home. You can get fancier, but nobody will see it. Then you replace the plastic insert and fold out desk and project complete. The 12 volt plug in our dash didn't work. We'd never used it before, but when I recently tried to plug something into it, there was no power. I looked behind it and saw one of the wires was disconnected, so I attached it, but still nothing. I then figured there must be a blown fuse and looked it up in my Ford owner's manual and on Google. After being confused looking at the owner's manual, I found there are two fuse boxes, one inside the cab and another under the hood. That one, of course, contained the fuse for the cigar lighter PowerPoint 12-volt plug. Here's how to get to the exterior fuse panel. You have to crawl up under the hood and open the two tabs on the box. You can then see inside and add or replace fuses. Easy once you figure it out. Looking at the manual page, I assumed it was fuse 72, which after figuring out how to open and see inside the fuse box I saw was empty. I figured, okay, maybe they forgot one. I also read on the Thor owner's forum that it was fuse 70, labeled strip chassis which was 30 amp and already installed so off to the auto parts store I went and bought two fuses they're bigger than the little fuses I already had so I bought a 20 and a 30 amp they were five dollars each they were also tall or short ones I got the short ones I put the 20 amp in slot 72 and nothing happened so I replaced the 30 amp fuse from slot 70 and retested my plug and all was well since we were going to do three nights in Savannah, Georgia, Rhonda wanted to fill our propane tank to be sure we had plenty of heat. We drove to the nearest Flying J to get gas and propane, but all the gas diesel pumps were out of order. The place was crazy. So we just got the propane. The very nice service tech filled us up and told us the right way to do it. Everyone out of the RV and all the pilot lights out. It cost about 18 bucks. Seeing all the mad drivers looking for gas was free. Thanks for watching. RVing with the Maracas is glad to have you aboard. Please subscribe to see more of our videos.